I used to like the rain when I was a kid. Even when it rained hard, like now. The last fight outdoors it rained. Slowed me up a lot. One of the most beautiful ladies I ever knew I met in the rain. High heels on wet pavement. Hey, here's your last look at Frank. They don't waste much time, do they? Frankie <laughs> No more aches and no more pain. The good Lord, he treated Frankie very fine. He let him out before he finished his time. Well, gentlemen, that's one way of getting sprung. Maybe he's better off. I didn't think that even Captain Munsey would put a 62-year-old man to work in the drain pipe. Yeah, another dead guy compliments a Captain Munsey. Always on tap. There he is now. Joe! It's Joe with him! Where'd you call him? Frank, he only had about eight months left to do, didn't he, Captain? Knowing McLean, out in eight months, back in nine. Right, Colin? Still carrying a grudge, eh? Lay off, Munsey. No, not Munsey. Sir. Sir. You won't even meet me halfway, will you, Colin? Ten days in solitary haven't taught you a thing. Better taught him not to carry a shiv anymore. Or do you still claim that knife was landed on you? Never mind that. The episode's closed. Collins, why keep on fighting? After all, I've got a job to do. I'm... Very well. Have it your way. come down and visit you, but I... Uh... Yeah. Dr. Walters. There's a meeting this morning. You'd better get straightened out. And the same to you. He comes out holding very high his head, and a man to blame soon be very dead. Joe. How are you, Joe? Good to see you, Joe. I'm glad you're back. Heard from the wife? Joe, you know Kid Coy. Seen him around. They moved him into Frankie McLean's place. 
Frankie was tops. A hard guy to follow. Whatever you say, Joe. About the stool pigeon, Joe, we made arrangements. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. What's okay? Nothing's okay. It never was and it never will be. Not till we're out. You get that? Out. Solitary, even this will taste good. Thanks. A long talk from the mouthpiece yesterday. Your lawyer came all the way from New York just to give you advice? Nah, ain't you heard? He's right here in stir, too. <laughs> Roberts, I need a little help. Get away from me. But you're in with Gallagher. Please. Roberts, you know Gallagher can fix anything. There's some things that just can't be fixed. Roberts, if you could put in a word for me. Gallagher, I got to talk to you. What's he want, Louis? Blow. Uh, Gallagher, you got to listen to me. I said blow. Uh, they'll kill me. They'll... Where is he? Wilson. He's here on a 529, also a stool pigeon. He planted a shiv on Collins. he made me do it, honest. If you can fix anything, Gallagher. If you can call off Collins, I'd pay, I'd... You'll pay. How's that cold coming along? Fine. Sir. Hello, Daniels. Morning, sir. Strella, they tell me you're pressuring some of the inmates in your area. Am I? Captain Munsey, sir, I've got to talk to you. Please, sir, please. Morning, sir. Oh, good morning, Gallagher. Morning, Captain. I understand you're responsible for settling that little feud over in cell block J. We appreciate your assistance, of course, but... boys and I were only trying to help. You and your boys. There's a very old bylaw in this institution about gangs or cliques. We don't like them. We don't want them. Why don't you break them up, Captain? Gallagher, when are you going to remember that you're not back home running a gang of hoodlums? That may be the policeman, eh? You just serve your time. And that way we'll both get paid off. That's right, Captain. Like the book says, we always get what's coming to us. All of us. Oh, excuse me, sir. What's the matter with you? Wasn't his fault? Sorry, Lister. Breakfast ready and made with the ham and eggs and the marmalade. <laughs> Sounds like a very important meeting you're going to this morning, Doc. Is uh, Captain Munsey going to be there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Brandy is the very best drink in the world. If you drink enough, your toes get curled. 
Calypso statistics show that if the level of alcohol in the blood exceeds one half of one percent, the blood pressure is affected, a cerebral condition occurs, and then you're cockeyed. And maybe that's the way it should be. You don't like this place, Doc. What for you stay here? You haven't got much choice, Calypso. Neither have I. But it's not as easy as all that, Mr. McCallum. This prison, this prison has almost twice as many men as it was built to accommodate. There's not enough work to keep the inmates occupied. Why not? The world we live in. Yes, we can give them real work, teach them trades, produce things. But the civilian manufacturer says we're competing with him. Trade unions say we're putting their people out of work. Nobody wants to help, not us. Manufacturers, unions, you might as well blame the weather. What you're really saying is you can't handle the situation. Excuse me, sir. I don't think you quite understood what the warden meant. It's not only a matter of controlling the men. He wants to help them. Muncie, what this prison needs is absolute discipline, not charity. Your loyalty to the warden doesn't change the fact that he may be getting too old for his job. Age, Mr. McCallum, is a matter of arteries, not years. It's a pity, Walters, you're a better philosopher than you are a doctor. But I'm getting tired of you in both roles. I was sent here today for one reason, to tell you that if there's any more trouble, if this prison isn't brought under the strictest control... Mr. McCallum. ...there'll be an immediate change in practically all personnel. We don't want to be bothered anymore. Is that clear, Warden? Yes. Clear to you, Doctor? Oh, absolutely. You can't be bothered. Well, that simplifies everything. The great public and its servants. You put up prisons, thick walls, and then your job is over. Finished. But is it over? You and your patent medicine remedies. Change the warden. New personnel. Absolute discipline. Do you know what this prison is, Mr. McCallum? One big human bomb. And you say, kick it and it'll be quiet. Smash it and it won't explode. Muncie. What do you think of the doctor's viewpoint? I think, sir, that on occasion, the doctor becomes unduly alarmed. Warden? I, I don't know. I do. Like so many dreamers and drunkards, the doctor's emotional words are empty. What's your solution? All I know is that when people are sick, you don't cure them by making them sicker. By your methods, we send the man back to society, a worse criminal than he was when they sent him to us. Platitudes, Doctor. I'm waiting for your solution. For men like you, Mr. McCallum, there will never be any solution. Wait a minute, Not why you want to destroy instead of build? What we need here is a little more patience and much more understanding. We've been patient too long. As for understanding, I'm positive the purpose of my visit cannot be misunderstood. You'll remain here, Warden. Only as long as there's no further trouble. Good day. Doctor. I'll see you to the gate, sir. I've been warden here for such a long time. I wouldn't know where to go. The place looks so nice now. Oh, that's swell. I got flower drapes and big chairs. This boy right. doesn't know anything about it. Fine, fine. And if he did, she it wouldn't matter. She pensa sempre a te, caro figlio. Giù, zio, ti manda questa frutta. She loves to come to see you. It's good she's so young. She thinks it's such fun, like a holiday. Over there, your attorney. She won't go through with it, but she's got to. I've had three different doctors to see her. 
They've all tried to explain how important an operation is right away, but she keeps saying no, not unless you're there. Nothing matters to Ruth without you, Joe, not even her life. How long has she got? I don't know. Let me tell her you're here. No. She loves you, Joe. Well, she'll understand. No. Okay. I guess you know what you're doing. Go back and talk to her. Try to make her go through with it. Keep trying. All right, Joe. Wait. Get some cash. Keep it in your office. What are you going to do? There's not much I can do, is there? I'm not trying to interfere. I'm just saying that if you send Roberts back to the drain pipe, I won't. All right, Muncie, have it your way. Doc. Joe, they're letting you run around loose. I'm waiting to be reclassified. Muncie will find another job for me, he always has. Well, sit down. Be with you in a second. Glad you dropped in. Patient of mine, old Pat Regan wants to see you. There's a pass to the infirmary right there on the table. Thanks. Doc. Yeah? How quick will cancer kill somebody? Oh, that's the wrong way to put the question. These days, cancer doesn't have to mean death at all. Why? Well, uh, how about if they have to operate? Even so, it depends entirely on the case. The important thing, of course, is the time element. Somebody close? Yeah. By the way, what time is it? About 10.30. Are you sure? To be exact, it's 10.27. Why?
Dr. Walters. Yes, Warden. What? Yes, yes, I'll be right over. Warden, when did it happen? I see. Prisoner just killed. Yeah? Well, this is one rap they can't hang on you, Collins. I'm your witness. Important thing, witnesses. Lucky you asked me before exactly what time it was. Yeah, wasn't it? A fellow named Wilson. Tough break. Accident? Positively. Witnesses. Terrific third baseman got paroled a couple of years ago. Doggerty? He'll be back for the book. Just knocked off his old lady. You don't say. Just shows you a guy don't think. If he'd done it last year, we might have beat the Patrolman's Benevolent Association. That's my advice about Wilson. I'd have said don't do it. Maybe that's why nobody has to. You only make things tougher for everybody else. I don't care about everybody else. That's cemetery talk. Why not? We're buried, ain't we? Only thing is, we ain't dead. It's on your mind. You and me. Out. You told me you had the fever ever since the day you got here. I thought you had more sense. No, Lexus, just yes or no. Look, Collins. Cons respect me. So does the warden. I've had a good set up here because I've tried to help both sides. I never crossed either. So what? So, in spite of Muncie, I'm still number one. I've been here six years. How many propositions I've had to crack the wall? Six thousand. They're on tap all the time. Look, Gallagher. Wait a minute. See this fellow at the linotype machine? He's a lifer. Done twelve. Come on. Right off. Yeah? Get out, Collins. He's okay. Sure. How's the plan? If there's no hitch, we go Tuesday. You in, boss? No. But good luck. It's all set this time. It's been all set every Tuesday for 12 years. Twelve years from now, it will still be next Tuesday. Look, Gallagher, I know this drum's full of crackpots. One con's gonna buy his way out, another knows the governor's cousin. A third guy's even gonna float out in a homemade balloon. But I'm not buying any pipe dreams. It can be done. It's been done before, it'll be done again. It can be done here, by us, by you and me. Collins, if I ever put in with anybody, it'll be with you. There's no need for that now. You, I can tell why. Promise me my parole. Very soon now, I'll be walking out of here. Next Tuesday? Could be next. So long, Gallagher. White tie and tails for the movie tonight. The boy gets the girl and that's all right. <laughs> it is too. <laughs> Check mate. Puppy again, soldier? Yeah, chess, dominoes, whatever we play. Don't you ever lose? Very seldom, friend. I was born with what you might call the golden touch. I always win the golden gloves once. They give me a watch and a robe with my name on the back. McGurl was there. Henrietta. I'll be in the infirmary. I gotta see a guy. Still figuring? Still. Save me a seat at the movie. Take it easy, lady. Hey. What 
goes between you guys in this state? Watch your language, my unromantic friend. You're speaking of a lady. It's enough to give somebody the creeps. You fellas smiling at a picture, throwing kisses at her. You might think she was real. She is. After a while, you'll get to know her, too. That's true. To me, she looks exactly like... like my wife. Yeah. That's no ordinary pinup girl. To each one of us, she's somebody special. You mean if I keep looking at her long enough like you fellas, she'll begin to remind me of Henrietta? That's right. But Henrietta's a blonde. She don't look nothing like her. She doesn't have to. Our calendar girl is just an inspiration, Brother Coy. She starts you thinking about the one you really want to see. For example, the last couple of days now, she's had me thinking about Flossie. I never told you gentlemen about Flossie, did I? To me, she's all the women I ever knew. And a few I hope I haven't met yet. I ran into Flossie one night in Eddie's place, in Miami. I had just sold a trusting gentleman a few shares in a radium mine, and I was trying to parlay my luck. I had only met Flossie that afternoon, but we were already very good friends. The dice were hot, and she kept them that way. I was heading for a fortune. Suddenly, just when everything was sunshine and roses, I heard the old familiar noises. Leave it to the police to break up a wonderful evening. It looked as though everybody was caught with their chips down. The raid didn't worry me, but the gun I was carrying was a problem. So Flossie had me slip the gun into her purse. She was not only beautiful, she knew the score as well. Furthermore, she knew precisely how to guide me through a back exit. Obviously, the girl was no tourist. My car was waiting there just as pretty as you please. And with my money and my gun still safe, off we drove. Driving along with such a dream doll beside me, I figured myself a pretty lucky guy. Plus, he had looks, brains, and all the accessories. She was better than a deck with six aces. But I regret to report that she also knew how to handle a gun. My gun. Before, I had only suspected that she was talented. Now, I was positive. I didn't do much talking because for once in my life, I couldn't find the right words. She wanted all the money I'd won, and I never refuse a lady, especially when she's armed. Accordingly, I stepped out of the automobile without any arguments whatsoever. And that gentleman was the last I ever saw of my car, my cash, or my Flossie. I wonder who Flossie's fleecing now. I don't get it. Why would a guy want to hang on to a memory like that? Who knows? I guess when you're on the inside, even the phony things on the outside seem wonderful. Just so they happened on the outside. All right, go ahead. Joe. How's the boy? Hello, Johnny. Regan. It's me, Collins. Where have you been? All day long, I've been asking for you. Frankie McLean, he died in the next bed. He gave me a message for you. Drain pipe got Frankie, same as me. But in that same drain pipe, there's a way out of this place. Go ahead. He said, ask soldier how in war they took hill. Hill? Yeah. 
Six thirty-three. Sure. You just gotta get into that drain pipe. You got it, Sure. Pets, you know, they're our stock and trade. If they don't get jammed under the brooder and smother, or drown in the drinking fountain, or get coccidiosis, or peck each other to death, we, we may be in the chicken business yet. <laughs> After you fed and watered them every three hours, which you have to do until they can take care of themselves, you won't feel so sentimental. Where's Tom? Stayed in the cell. Another letter to his wife. and his wife today. Thought it'd be a good idea to get together, maybe sometime soon. You mean we might be going out for a change? Honey, make a wish. What are you talking about? It belongs on you. Makes me feel so... I don't know. Like I was somebody. Oh, Tom. Where'd you get it? Where'd the money come from? Where'd you get it? Cora, I stole the money. I juggled the books and took $3,000. You? You stole? Why? Darling, the way we were going, you wanting things, things you ought to have, and me strapped all the time. We were heading for a split up. Don't you see? I just had to do it. All my life, the one thing I really wanted was a fur coat. I can't give it up. I won't. No, oh, darling. But what if something should happen? Nothing I... that happens could matter. Unless I lost you. Captain. Sorry about that little incident this morning. Those things happen, you know. Yes, sir. Cigarette? Tom, you're no hoodlum like the others in this cell. Why protect them? We've been over that before, Captain. Before, you didn't need my help as much as you do now. I'm in a position to make things easier for you. Like you did for Wilson? Wilson was careless. Careless people have accidents. I get quite a kick out of censoring the mail. 
All these letters you write home, for example, and the answers you never get. Please, Captain, let me alone. She's the most important thing in the world to you, isn't she? Well, you come up for parole soon, if your conduct's good. I'm the one that decides that. I'm the only one who can help you. No one else. Captain, I'm a cheap thief. I know I'm a failure. But I'm not an informer. That's what I like to see in a man. Stability. Fidelity. You're right, Lister. We're both wasting our time. Me by talking to you, and uh, you by writing to your wife. Captain, you've heard from her. By mail this morning. Please, please, Captain, tell me. In a way, Tom, you're a free man. She's divorcing you. I'm going to try to talk some sense to you. I'm going to land right on the line. There has been in recent weeks a mounting unrest in this prison. Don't think for one minute that I don't know about it. Up to now, you've enjoyed the regulation privileges. However, if you persist in fighting among yourselves, antagonizing the guards, and making way for accidents like the one that happened in the machine shop this morning, then all your privileges will be revoked at once. Be careful of your associates. Always remember that one bad prisoner can spoil things for the rest of you. So watch your step. It's up to you to protect your own interests, as I am compelled to protect mine. If there's one more infraction of the rules, if you cannot conduct yourselves without creating a disturbance, without further accidents, then I shall have to use every means to keep you under control. So that's it, men. Meet me halfway, and you can depend on me to see that every prisoner is treated fairly. Cell R-17. Convict McLean of cell R-17, Barry. Collins comes back from solitary to cell R-17. A prisoner's killed in the presence of three convicts, all from cell R-17. And now a suicide. Same cell, same gang, same trouble. Just a minute. You're not trying to say that we had anything to do with that. You said yourself it was suicide. Only because I can't prove otherwise. Tom was one of us, the way we felt about I him. I know, I know. You loved him. You can't throw the hook into us. We didn't touch Tom. You know we were at the movies. So you were. And Collins was at the doctor's office this morning when Wilson was killed. I'm a realist. I don't believe in coincidence. Especially when it happens more than once. You fought the warden, the guards, and me. You're not fit for civil life. And you won't accept prison life. So tomorrow you'll begin a new life. You'll all report for work in the drain pipe. Tell. 
Krauts had the hill, and we were ordered to take it. How? What'd you do? Charge him? Did you ever try it uphill with a few Kraut 88s putting a blast on you? Spencer, let me have those chests, man, will you? Give me some light. Here was the hill. Here was us. Mountains here. The ocean here. Stalemate. But you took it. Yeah. We took it, all right. Give me some more light. We sent some men out in the boat. They landed up here. We covered them with a heavy bombardment. At HR, we attacked uphill. Krauts turned all their guns to stop us. That was exactly when the other gang attacked from behind. And it worked. We got through, all right. Most of us, anyway. The rest is still there. They couldn't cover both sides, huh? Thanks, soldier. How's that tie in with us, Joe? What are you getting at? Tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. You know, I was just thinking. An insurance company could go flat broke in this prison. Good morning, Louis. Good morning. I know how you feel, Gallagher, and I'm sorry, but that's it. But it doesn't add up, Warden. You're punishing all of us because Lister took his life. Why? Things are out of hand, that's why. It's the only decision we could make. Wait, you mean Muncie? No, I'm the Warden here. This is my order. It's his work. I've heard complaints about Muncie for years, and I'm sick of them. Muncie knows his job, and he does his job. Gallagher, I've tried my best to do the right thing by the men, but it's just no use. I'm convinced now that what's needed here is not more charity, but more discipline. Yes. No, no, absolutely. No interviews. I don't care what newspaper he's with. Did you get my column yet? Well, keep on trying. Well, thanks for seeing me, Warden. Just a minute. There's one more thing, Gallagher. I was going to send for you. This letter concerns you. Yeah? Gallagher, you and I have always been able to work together. You've been a great help to me with the men. What is it? The Department of Corrections. They've canceled all parole hearings indefinitely. What does this mean? Another year? Two? Five? Not necessarily. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. That is your fault. You've given in to Mutsi all along the line. A couple of weeks ago, I stood here and you told me the gates were going to open for me. In just a few more days, I was going home. Home. I should have known better. Those gates only open three times. When you come in, when you've served your time, or when you're dead. Gallagher, can I still count on your cooperation? Look at me, fellas. Hi. I just got a pip and an assignment. I got to write a story proving how good the chow is around here. You prove that. In Time Magazine, it'll make you man of the year. Ah, there's something interesting. Now, what have you got here? Message, Collins, drain pipe. We're hot. Got to be done. Uh, smell that. Now you know what happened to Rin Tin Tin. Western Union. Who? Collins. What's all the gab about? Every day I have to take shot of them guys down in a drain pipe. I don't like the job. The air down there is very unsanitary. Don't breathe in. Just breathe out. <laughs> hey, 
I've seen many a guy go to work on that drain pipe. There's more goes in as comes out. They keep building it long enough, <laughs> they'll run out of guys. Hiya, Shorty. Hiya. Besides, they're building it backwards. Nobody knows where that drain pipe is going or where it'll come out or if it'll ever be used. Hiya, Tyrone. Hiya, Muggsy. You know, the way I got it figured out. Makes sense. What are you trying to say? Well, uh, I got a favor to pose you. Don't ask me no favors. I can't be bribed, see? Besides, you ain't got enough dough to bribe me. I was once married to a dame like that, Bridge. What are you talking about? Wonderful structure. Been up in the air most of the time. said get back. I'm all right, soldier. Ciao. Father, we're just looking around. Shopping or buying? New orders. We're supposed to watch some men no matter where they are. In here, someone else watches after them. However, if you wish to stay... Thanks. Take care. 
of everything. The stuff to blow the tower. It's gonna be tough. We gotta have it. All right. I'll try and get it to you. Tomorrow, then. You hit the yard at 12.15. I'll need two minutes. At exactly 12.17, I'll be in the tower opening the gates. 12.17. Gotta be full then. Those gates open, the whole population will break out. Amen. I know you got it all worked out, Joe, but don't we need a getaway car? How about money? Can't get far without a little cash. And clothes and these things, we'd be spotted right away. That's all I can tell you for now. But we've been talking out for a long time. And this is it. Joe, I don't want you to get sore, but, well, I've only got a short stretch left to do, and... There's no such thing as a short stretch. But you haven't told us much. We don't know how it'll work or what's supposed to happen. You're moving so fast that I... Say it. You want to pull out? You can. We don't know any more than you do. You declared yourself and you can't quit now. Shut up. Don't misunderstand me, Joe. Next night. How many? Two. I'll play these. Three here. Spencer. In or out? No guarantees go at this break. It's all or nothing. But you've got to make up your mind now. Now. Either way, no hard feelings. With you, Joe. I'll play along. I never thought different. Neither did I. Joe. Maybe. Who knows? I might even wind up owning a piece of a champ. All you guys will sit ringside. Free. You're kidding yourself, Coy. Odds are, once we're on the outside, we'll never see each other again. A big city for me. When you got millions of neighbors, nobody cares who lives next door. A fine, a right dame. And that... That'll be that. Won't Henrietta be surprised? I think me and her will go away on a long trip. Sure. Most cons get married as soon as they get out. Married? Gee, I never thought of that. <laughs> Hope you make it, Coy. You going back in the stock racket, Spencer? I think not. Printing costs are so high these days. Well, I don't exactly know what I'll do. Not yet. What about you, soldier? Me? I got a long way to go. Ever since the war, I've been trying to get back to a little town in Italy. But you know how the breaks go. With me, one rap led to another. Anyway, I was never able to make it. Maybe this time. Go away. The military police, they were here. When were they here? How long ago? What did they say? I talked to them. It was nothing. There are more important things. He has brought no food. He is leaving. So? Food's out there in the truck. Thank you. No! You will take nothing. You will stand in line with the others. When there is food, you will eat. And when there is no food? Then you will starve with the others. We're not all so fortunate as you, my daughter. We have no great love to quiet our appetites. Robert does not object, why do you? He does not know you so well as I. Huh. Is it so great a crime to accept food from those who deprived you of it? Nothing personal, of course, but since you do not spare the bombs, we do not expect you to spare the food. You Americans are such a generous Never mind the speeches, the food's out there, go get it. No! He hates you, Robert, he hates your uniform. He fought you in Sicily, he still fights you. 
My position does not permit me to hate anyone. Hey. I'm foolish, so I cry. It's nothing in a war. People cry easy. Promise me you won't come here again. If the police should find you... Bringing us food this way is against the law. The law is second. My wife comes first. Say nothing about it, you understand? Robert is a stranger. We never saw him before. He stopped here for water. Water for the truck. And if they discovered I was lying, what then? Why should I risk my life for you? Because I stuck mine out for you. For me, no, senora. You came to see her. I will not lie for you. You and your police can destroy each other. Sit down. Sit down. Gina, keep him here. I'll get the water. If they believe me, I've got a chance. and a swell yarn. Go ahead, Spencer. Well, gentlemen, as I was saying, there I was, besieged on all sides. The citizens to the front, the howling investors behind me, the sheriff's men closing in. But I remained undaunted, smiling, secure in my rights. What happened? Here I am. OK, break it up. Let's try to get some sleep. Why? I like to hear Spencer talk. We've talked too much already. There are ears all over this drum, and they all belong to one guy. What's the answer to it? Are we going to have to keep every prisoner in virtual solitary? Other prisons must have these same problems, but they clear them up, keep things running smoothly. We've been through difficult times before, Ward. Oh, never like this. And McCallum is coming tomorrow. Why? Why can't he let me alone? Everything's gone wrong. I don't know who's to blame, but I do know that every prisoner hates us. Not us. Me. It's me they hate. I wonder why. You put on a guard's uniform and see how much they love you. You talk to the prisoners over a loudspeaker. I talk to them with a club. You only make the rules. I have to enforce them. Maybe it's the way you enforce them. Maybe it is. Oh, uh, I'm not criticizing, Munzee. It's just that... But you are. And perhaps you're right. All I know is that I've tried to do my job as I saw it. But if I'm the cause of this trouble, if I'm wrong and those convicts are right, then you can have my resignation immediately. No, Munzee. That's just what the inmates would like. No, no, that's not the answer. As you said, we've been through some difficult times together here. Well, we're still here and we're still together. Let's uh, leave it that way, hmm? Well, the situation seems to call for a drink. Warden? Thanks, I, uh, I'm going to turn in. Good night. Well, don't be discouraged, Warden. It's a rule in all the best stories. Everybody always lives happily ever after. Good night. You don't believe I meant what I said about resigning, do you, Doctor? In a million words, no. You're wrong. I really want to help the warden. Just that he's confused. He doesn't know that kindness is actually weakness. And weakness is an infection that makes a man a follower instead of a leader. Seems to me a very great leader once said, the meek shall inherit the earth. 
Science contradicts that, Doctor. Nature proves that the weak must die so that the strong may live. Authority, cleverness, imagination. Those are the real differences between men. I walk amongst these convicts, these thieves and murderers, alone, unarmed. But they respect me. They obey me. Fits you, doesn't it? Hmm? <laughs> the warden's chair. It fits you. You're drunk. Why not? I'm a very ordinary man. I get drunk on whiskey. What makes you drunk? Power? You flatter me, Doctor. I'm just a policeman. I carry out the warden's orders. Did he ever order you to crucify the prisoners? Were you ordered to make convict Lister hang himself? What are you talking about? You were seen going into Lister's cell and you were seen coming out. What happened in between? Did you censor his mail? Wouldn't he give you any information? Or did you tell him a few lies about his wife? You better stop drinking, Doctor. Your imagination's working overtime. Visiting cells is part of my job. Helps me keep tabs on the men. In that way, I can control them. Control them? You mean torture them, don't you? The more pain you inflict, the more pleasure you get. That's why you'd never resign from this prison. Where else would you find so many helpless flies to stick pins into? You talk to me like that. If I didn't keep you here, you'd be starving. You surgical butcher. For me, it's the last stop anyway. But for you, it's just a beginning, isn't it? Why, you're Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, Caesar. Look at you in the warden's chair. Caesar trying out his throne. That's enough. Caesar cries enough? <laughs> come, come. You're obvious, Muncie. Your every move is obvious. You've cheated. You've lied. You've murdered. You're worse than the worst inmates of this prison. You're the psychopath here, not they. <laughs> imagination, just force, brute force. Congratulations, force does make leaders, but you forget one thing, it also destroys them. Yards ahead, there's a side road. Turn right. We got over 100 miles to go. We shouldn't be stopping now. Shut up. It is a joke, it is. Why don't you see her after the job? Because I said we're stopping now. Okay, okay. but she's about the same. See that she doesn't need anything. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Collins, 
I'm glad you're here. Excuse me. I dreamed I was running up a hill. I was chasing you. Catch me? Almost. I must be slowing down. Well, I guess I can make it come out any way I want. It's my dream. Pretty soon now, you're going to be getting out of that chair. And it won't be a dream either. Joe, darling. Oh, the first thing we'll do is go for a long walk. No cars for us. No trains. Just walking. We'll walk around the world. I'm tired already. <laughs> I'll have Sadie fix you some supper. And then we'll talk. Oh, I've got a million things to tell you, and this time I won't forget. I made a list. Ruth, I can't stay. Next time when I come back, I'll... Another next time? This is the last of them. When I come back, it'll be for good. I love you, Ruth. Why? I'm sick, Joe. Why do you love me? When you're sick, people don't really love you. They only feel sorry for you. I'm not people. I'm Joe Collins, one guy. Joe. I'm sorry. I guess I'm selfish. Every time you walk out that door, I'm afraid you're never coming back. If I only knew where you came from, where you go, what you do. Ruth, let's leave things the way they started. I'm a guy who ran out of gas, who saw an ordinary little farmhouse by the side of the road, who found the first important thing in his life waiting for him in a wheelchair. Let's keep it that way for just a little while longer. Another day, maybe two, and I'll tell you anything you want to know. I know what I want to know. The rest doesn't matter. If I weren't so sick, I could help you. There are all kinds of sick people, Ruth. Maybe we can help each other. I love you, Joe. Go on back and finish that dream. I'll slow down and you won't have to run so fast. And when you catch me, hold on tight. a couple of more hours. We're close together. Load's ready. Take it easy, Roberts. You got the whole day ahead of you. Sure, this is my racket. Thanks. So, to the right. That switch. When we break, you'll handle that switch. Puts us on the other track, the one that leads to the tower. Got that? Check. What's all the chatter? Just wondering what time it was. Why? You working by the hour? Good morning, fellas. Hi, Louis. 
Morning, Chapey. Another story? Yeah, but this is a good one. Hiya, fellas. Hello, Hello Louie. Finally gonna make you grease monkeys famous. Gonna put you all on the front page. <laughs> That's what got us here. Hey! Tell me, Charlie, what has prison life taught you about being a mechanic? It's taught me that when I get out, I shouldn't be a mechanic. What about it, Andy? Got anything to say to the press? Not very much to say. I do as I'm told. Everything? Everything. Where do you keep your tools? Eight fire bombs filled with juice. The best. Eight fuses. Light two as you drive into the yard. Like I say, I always do as I'm told. We go to press at 12.15 sharp. I'll be there. Spell his name right, Louis. His wife keeps a scrapbook. <laughs> <laughs> Some good, some bad. Good. Eight fire bombs in the toolbox, truck ready to go. Bad. No dynamite. Gotta have another it. chance. Just came from the die plant. Gotta have not it. enough time. Look, Louis. I've got an important assignment for you. Get down at the green pipe and see Collins. Collins is with us. Tell him there's no dynamite. Do we go anyway? We'll have to go without it. And Louis. You got 45 minutes. Think I'd be late for my own coming out party? I've already... But I've tried to explain, madam. No, no, I'm sorry. All visiting days have been canceled, even for families. Take off your hat. I'm here to get a pass, Miss Lawrence. Where to this time? To the drain pipe. We're doing a special layout and... Wait a minute, what's wrong? Nothing. You want to do a story? We want to help you. Captain Munsey's office. Whose car? Mr. McCallum's. Okay, pass it through. What's the matter with him? Munsey left orders. Oh. You wanted to go to the drain pipe, huh? Yeah, anything wrong with that? Munsey in? In and waiting. Come on. Wait here. The customer for the drain pipe. 7033, Convict Miller. Gallagher's man? He was looking for a pass in the warden's office. Gallagher? You want to see him now? Yeah. Yeah. Bring him in. And you're interested in the drain pipe. Yes, sir. I don't get this, Captain. We're planning a big spread on the different kinds of work the cons are doing. And I... Oh, that's right. You are a reporter, aren't you, Louie? Yes, sir. Sit down. No, no, not there. Here. What's the point, Captain? I've been to the drain pipe before. I've been there a hundred times. What's the idea of all this? Tell me, Louie. How does an illiterate like you become a reporter? Even a star reporter? I don't know, sir. I do. What business did you have in the drain pipe? I told you. Tell me again. To write a story. I don't like that answer. All right. 
Bye, Jackson. Gallagher sent you to the drain pipe to see somebody. Who was it? Nobody. Just the right. Wrong answer. Leave me alone, Captain, please. I don't have the answers you want. No? Again. Who was it Gallagher sent you to see? I told you. Nobody. He gave you a message. What was it? There was no message. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know much about anything, do you? No. I suppose you don't even know that Collins plans to break out of the drain pipe at 12.15 today, do you? No. Do you? lying to me, haven't you? Gallagher does know something about the break, doesn't he? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. You can hit me. You can keep on hitting me. I don't know what you want. Take him to the isolation ward. Spread the word that he had an accident coming back from the drain pipe. Yes, sir. Is there any connection between Gallagher and Collins? No. If there was, he would have told me. Okay. Get your man out of here. Hey, you. Muggsy. Yeah. Anything for me? Oh. Sure, sure, Joe. Anything wrong with you? No. Back to work. Collins? All right, Doc. The cardiogram just came back from the lab, Collins. Yeah? I have to check you again. Make it snappy, Doc. Okay, okay, keep it moving.
got about ten minutes. There's five of us. We'll have to go one at a time. What position do you want? You're the boss. Whatever you say. Take your pick for the break. What position? I said I'd play along with you, Joe. You name it. You. Same goes for me. We got a few minutes, freshman. When we break, what position do you want? I want to give all the help I can, Joe. What position? Last. That'd be the toughest, wouldn't it, Joe? Last. Say, coming back from the drain pipe. Coming back? Yeah. Muncie. Keep circulating. Captain? Have a better chance. Oh, sorry, Captain. I didn't see you there. That's all right, Hopkins. But just remember, there's no reward for bringing him back alive. Not in this jungle. Yes, sir. Join the guard along that section of the wall. Yes, Let's dump this dirt. Dump it back there. starts in the yard, that's where we go. After that, you can suit yourselves. But right now, you'll do as I say. Now, get back in the hall, all of you. Spencer, you and Coy strip some of that electric wire. Soldier, get that hack over there. Joe, what about me? You? It'll be no discredit to you. You'll go away for a short while. When you get back, we'll try to fit you in someplace else. I can't resign. This is my whole life. Sign it. Get on that loudspeaker. Tell them you've resigned.
Attention! Attention! Attention, everybody. This is Warden Barnes. I have just resigned. I, uh... Told them the prison's now in charge of Captain Muncie. Muncie? Go on, tell them. No. With Warden Barnes' resignation now in effect, this institution is in charge of Captain Muncie. Oh. I repeat, Captain Muncie is your warden. You will obey him. You will take all orders from Warden Muncie. Yeah! 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 Yeah!
<laughs> Gee, that hurt, Doc. That hurt plenty. This place is full of pain, Calypso. You're hurt. Collins. Collins and Muncie are dead. And the others. All those others. Why do they do it? They never get away with it. Alcatraz, Atlanta, Leavenworth. It's been tried in a hundred ways from as many places. Always failed. But they keep trying. Why do they do it? I don't know, Doc. But whenever you got men in prison, they're going to want to get out. But they learn. They must. Nobody escapes. Nobody ever really escapes. Mm -hmm.